thank you everybody for tuning in. Join me on today's video where we will be reviewing the rectangular R1ZK2 which is the Zaku Tuna homage unboxed on this channel not too long ago. Now this watch is absolutely incredible. I can tell you that from the start rectangular have absolutely gone to tan when making this watch in fact when they sent this watch into me they told me that this is their most technologically advanced watch that they've ever made and i absolutely believe them when i reel off the list of specifications on this watch it will definitely shock you and when i take you closer looking at all the smaller finer details that they've gone to and the extent they've gone to while making this watch it is absolutely mind-blowing and this is what i absolutely love when it comes to rectangular they do some really great themed watches they're always on point so this is gonna be a somewhat lengthy review so let me get straight down to the specifications before we move on to measurements etc and talk about everything else that you guys can see in front of you so let's look at the specifications so this watch has a titanium alloy case now titanium alloy in the sense that it is of course mixed with titanium it isn't 100 percent and that's why this watch doesn't feel super light now sometimes 100 percent titanium does feel quite hollow and with this watch you do get some weight but it is a lot lighter than you'd expect it to be now the shroud is made from an aluminium alloy now as well as that you've got your standard ar coated sapphire crystal which is flat you also have a loomed sapphire bezel insert yes you heard me right sapphire tried and tested you do have 120 click unidirectional bezel you've got a screw down case back and a screw down crown which gives this watch an overall water resistance rating of 500 meters now rectangular did say to me that through their water testing they found this watch reached depths in excess of 600 meters and the screw down case back it looks quite small but these are quite thick and they go quite deep down into the case now the movement powering this watch is the ever reliable and very trustworthy seiko epson nh 35 movement with the date function it's got 24 joules hacks and winds it beats at a rate of 21,600 vibrations per hour which gives you a sweep of six ticks a second these movements are very reliable straight out the box and don't really need further regulation but if you do regulate them you'll make them a lot more accurate now that being said this whole package that you get you know uh, rectangular's most technologically advanced watch what is it going to set you back now this watch is going to be 220 pounds from the official store which i'll link within the description and that equals around 300 dollars now it is a bit pricey they do want a fair bit but i gotta go back to the specifications you know they have put a lot of effort into this watch uh, some of these specs you will not get at that price point uh, and looking at the watch it is homaging that's a four you know to six thousand pound watch from seiko so in comparison three hundred dollars to you know six or eight nine thousand dollars you know is a big difference um so you can get a very small taste of a watch like that if indeed this is your style now talking about the style of course uh they have gone and homaged the gundam wing um, version that Seiko came out with Seiko done as Zaku Tuna they came out with a few colors uh, and you know this is where Rectangular have come in took that and then effectively homage it to the best of their capability it isn't exactly the same which is what I love about it they've got a lot of their own touches on there which is probably a bit closer to the whole homage thing um, and not being exact copy which is I think is great uh, especially in this uh, layout that we have the rectangular also provide us with three different colors you've got this green you've got, also got this dark red or a maroon red uh, and a very light almost powder blue slash baby blue version as well so all three colors are available and you know i think they all look great but i was definitely drawn to this sort of military green uh botch case of course after that zaku robot in gundam wing and it's just stunning in hand I'll talk you through this watch and show you all the smaller features you know even if this watch isn't for you or it's too big for you etc you will definitely appreciate the lengths rectangular have gone to uh in, to give us something so good so unique you know in in, in the homage world uh, and just so well made now let's talk about dimensions because i bet you're dying to hear how big this watch is now the diameter of the case side to side is 51 and a half millimeters top to bottom it goes to around 53 millimeters now the actual bezel size is 42.5 millimeters and the log to log you'll, when i turn the watch on the side the logs are actually under the shroud and they are coming in at 42 millimeters however you know this is what you'll see on your wrist 
uh, but you do have a good gap between uh, just so it can fit over your wrist the case is 17.2.3 millimeters thick as you'd expect an absolute tank of a watch the log width is 22 millimeters and the strap actually tapers outwards towards 24 millimeters and comes down to a nice 20 mil now the crown size is eight millimeters that is quite significant in this watch very thick and it goes with the overall shape and aesthetic of this watch so yeah absolutely a big size uh, it is going to suit a lot of the bigger guys a lot of the bigger wristed guys as well and we will see at the end of the review with someone of my wrist size of six and a half inches how well i pulled this off talking about wrist size let's show you what's on wrist i am wearing my seiko manta ray save the ocean uh, special limited edition because this is something i modded and i just got myself a, a strap called hex ad bracelet to accompany this watch so loving that right now but yes back to this rectangular now let's start off with the dial a very lovely shade of green there's no sunburst effect to it or anything it's just plain matte now you do have a mixture of printed and somewhat applied features i think this dial has been done in a very clever way so the hour markers do have these applied uh, pvd polished metal frames as you can see but the loom has been layered inside it so it's not like your normal applied hour markers where they are placed onto the dial and normally they have feet securing them into the dial uh, this is where the frames have been actually applied and then the loom has been filled so you got a mixture between batons and circular hour markers with that traditional triangle at the 12 o'clock as you find on most dive watches especially the ones on margin seikos now you also have a date wheel at the three o'clock now just have a look at the date wheel you've got that black outline printed with the arrow pointing at the date and it's just these smaller features that i love about this dial now you follow that line around and you can see it's on the inside of the dial and it does kind of semi border those hour markers and you also do have four crosses coming from it uh, giving it a very sort of tactical look and again very on point with the theme now let's have a closer look at the printing and the logos that you see here so on your top left corner you've got rectangular automatic in silver printed really well and clearly and looking at your bottom right hand side you've got the water resistance rating and professional now look at the 500 meters it's that military style stencil uh, and again you know conscious decision to design that dial you know just not any ordinary text was used just in line with the theme now on your bottom left you've got the attack logo and i believe on the version one it said something like gundam or zaki i'm not too sure now but yeah they've gone with attack and that is with the yellow outline black center and you know what you gotta give it to them that's been so well made now turning attention to the handset let's start off with the finish you can see a very smooth sandblasted finish to the hands and uh, you've got this obelisk style hands with chevrons in the center and i really am a massive fan of these hands great length on the minute hand and the hour hand the second hand for me just runs about 0.2 to 0.4 mil short i would like it to be just a touch uh, longer but the length is actually okay it is not far from touching the chapter ring but you do have this lovely red circle on the counterweight of the second hand which does make that slightly stand out and it gives it just a bit of color on this majority green dial the chapter ring is white and i will tell you now that the chapter ring is actually loomed and that is something that you really see now the bezel itself it is pvd coated in black and you can see the scalloping presence on the edge similar to what you see on sort of subs but this of course on a tuner uh, really nicely made great detailing fully brushed and the scalloping is very smooth no sharp edges so there's a lot of quality feeling onto this bezel now i did show the bezel in the unboxing and i was not happy at all with the way the bezel functioned it was quite inconsistent very loud and a little bit gritty 20 click bezel oh that doesn't sound the best though that's a bit disappointing so me being myself i did open this watch out. i removed the shroud and i wanted to investigate look at what they've done now the thing with these bezels they're quite easy to take off you remove the shroud and you can literally pop off the bezel because on these watches the shroud holds them in so let's go over let's show you what i did so removing the bezel i found that the mechanism underneath it was a row of very sharp teeth now the click system is a seiko style click spring system where you've got three sort of raised um, you know metal little parts which do touch the underside of that bezel and therefore that's why you got this really harsh click so what i decided to do is basically just round it off 
flipped the bezel over, I got myself a diamond edge file and started filing away at those sort of sharp teeth, trying to wear them down ever so slightly. It's the first time I'm doing it, I don't really know what I'm doing, but it's just an idea I have, so I really have to be kind of careful. File it down slightly, check the smoothness, just take off the edginess and see what effect that gives me. Now, after doing that, I turn my attention to the click springs. Um, the metal is kind of thick, so what I decide to do is, uh, using that same file, is sort of file those you know the little metal pieces that stick out um try to file them down at a slight angle just to give it a bit of a smooth transition over both surfaces um and once i filed them around put everything back do a couple of tests and i did take this off on and on a couple of times just to try to mess with it try to get my right i don't know let's just say tuning it uh to my sort of preference overall i still didn't get it how i wanted to get but the design is kind of stopping you from doing that i've only made it just slightly better i've took out the inconsistency by doing that yeah, that's you know better than what it was initially the inconsistency has gone and but it still is a bit loud but you know it's not uncommon to have these kind of bezels so alignment wise it is more or less there grip is fantastic i mean shrouded tuners uh, as you all know they're quite difficult to rotate as the shadows get in the way but you know this is a lot better now let's move away from that bezel let's have a look at this shroud and very smoothly done very nicely done i think that pvd coating just really kind of cover those edges that you'd feel any edginess off uh, coated really well and you can tell it is applied quite thick that's something that you can feel in hand you do have black uh, pvd coated polished screws that hold the shroud in place as well now just have a look at this color let me take a second to just admire this i love this shade of green you can tell it has been mixed with a bit of black to give you this darkness to it um, and you know you do get some different shades when you look at this green in different lights very smooth shroud and that is a really nice color let's have a closer look at some of the detailing here you do have debossed letters telling you lock pointing towards of course that crown and it's good to see things like that again it is very on point with the theme stuff that you'd see on robots or machinery um you know text like this engravings etc and going back to some of the features i see on the dial this is what you'd see on panels you know and so forth so i love that design element that they have put into the watch um uh, now while i'm here i might as well actually talk about the whole case uh and then i'll give you the loom shot so let's flip the watch over let's check out the case back and you know in the previous version they did have uh the zaku bot there but now of course they have gone with this um it's like a very funky axe now you've got r1zk the model rectangular sapphire crystal etc 50 atm and just some specifications some really nice designing here and yeah you know different finishing brushing gives you a really nice look uh, as i mentioned this case back it is very thick sealed up on the inside of the case there's a seal between the dial and the movement there's also a seal between the crystal the crown that screws down let's show you that as well very strong pop as it comes out that also has a gasket present so yeah i think the water resistance on this will be somewhat reliable uh but you know as i said unless there is some certified uh testing present then i still would take it with a pinch of salt okay so now when we get into the loom shot we'll see a couple of things uh, that the chapter ring is loomed as well as that attack logo is also visible that's fantastic on this dial you also have that loomed sapphire bezel as i mentioned you've got all the loomed hour marks and hands which we expect um but on the chapter ring and the attack logo it does start to fade out it isn't as bright as the rest of the markers which i don't really expect it to be uh because you'll have to put a lot more loom on there but you know initially when it does glow it is really something really nice to look at and then as you keep looking at it it does start to dull down until it eventually does die out but what remains is the numerals on the bezel which are loomed and also the hour markers and the hands loom has been applied thoroughly really well there's no patchiness there you know really bright good quality loom plenty of layers and as you can see the it does glow uh, for quite a long time it is very effective as well but you know i do have to give credit for looming the chapter ring and the attack logo yes i would have preferred it to be a little bit stronger and last a bit longer but you know it's a nice little touch uh, while you can see it now let's move over to the strap i really do like um the in-hand feel you know the texturing presence on the back it's also stamped redune uh, you got some perforation there and these wave straps i'm not a fan but they are comfortable on this occasion they're quite soft 
ultimately at the end you can see they are slightly straight so if you can manage to get in a i don't know another strap tuck it in uh, you'll have sort of this integrated logs as well but i would kind of keep it on this strap i don't see any issues with it unless you want something totally different now moving over to the keep that you see on this strap going back to rectangular being very on point is just look at that branding there uh i think that is the color code or the robot code but yeah i can't really make out what that is what is that even yeah i'm gonna give up i can't tell but yeah it's m9 okay so helmet off the robot yeah that's easy to see now and um the actual buckle as well quite wide nicely brushed angled as well and yeah just overall i think they've done so well now let's put this big boy on wrist let's see how it looks rectangular beast on my six and a half inch wrist uh one thing that you can instantly see is that strap sticking at the back uh, i've got it on the third hole yet yeah, quite small wrist um so you know the strap is quite long there's only so much that that keep can secure the end bit um but in terms of sitting on wrist very comfortable i don't feel the weight um that's one thing i didn't mention actually i forgot so the weight is 127 grams that's where this titanium alloy and the uh, aluminium alloy come into it um, like i said it doesn't feel super light but 130 gram is still a fairly decent weight uh, because i think the previous ones were a lot heavier around the 150 or the 180s which you'd feel a lot more uh, and the watch would bobble around but this watch doesn't really move around it is on wrist it does stick out quite a bit you know that tuna case that's what they're designed to do um and i think i don't know there's no real overhang that makes sense like you can't see half the watch hanging off my wrist you can still see the strap so it is secured pretty well and i think you could pull this off in a very you know sporty fashion um you know under the cuff definitely not um but yeah one thing you are likely to do though if you're anything like myself walking through your house door frames etc especially in the uk i don't know how wide the door frames are in the us but in the uk you're going to smack this into your door frames a couple of times maybe damage the wall maybe damage the stride that is one to look out for when you're a watch with this much thickness now to summarize uh price let's bring that in 300 dollars uh for this watch i think is absolutely worth it i'm not even going to hesitate because this watch is just so different to what's out there yet it's a homage but is a homage of a very you know limited edition watch from seiko and you know not a lot of people are going to buy that as well considering the price but when you step over to the aliexpress side of things or the dark world of homages um yeah super super available and it's really well built as well uh, and i like this is rectangular touches all over it they've got the only little touches present uh they've tried really hard and as i mentioned in the unboxing video you know the tooling for this watch isn't going to be available it's something they had to get done themselves especially the dial you know they had to go out and make a new set of dials uh, and probably make new sets of cases shrouds etc you know so they have kind of revisited everything and you know there are a lot of costs involved in that and i can't imagine they made 10,000 or 2,000 pieces etc so the numbers would have been quite low um, also sapphire on the bezel sapphire on the crystal lovely coloring lovely paint job on this um, just I think everything is just so on point and I really really like the branding now if you're a fan of tuna watches uh, and you're looking for the extra one to add to your collection definitely check out rectangular uh, and I think I'll stop here. I have covered quite a lot in this review. So I have linked to watch in the description. Please check it out. Uh, and I will leave you guys there. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you everybody for watching.